Hey, I'm with my great friend, Billy Humphrey. So excited to announce the launch of a new e-course. In this e-course, we're gonna have candid conversations, practical teaching on what it looks like to be transparent, yep. vulnerable, really learning how to love one another in a day and age where the love of most is growing cold. Totally. John 13 to 17, Jesus unpacks some of the deepest drippings of his own heart for us. He models for us how to live completely transparent and vulnerable in intimacy with God and with one another. And it's really the prescription for the church at the end of the age to live alive and love, burning, and become that pure and spotless bride. It's just one of these things where we pour our hearts out and yeah, He touches we've, us. We've done a lot of media projects. This one's gonna challenge. I'd encourage get a Kleenex box. <laughs> when you dive in with us, this is gonna be up and personal and the Holy Spirit's just gonna bless you. We encourage you, enroll now. Hey, welcome to this free webinar call with my good friend Billy Humphrey is on tonight uh, in a unique season of his life and uh, just want to thank him for taking the time to join us tonight. As you're jumping on, we'd love to hear uh, where you're um, watching from. I see uh, the UK is on tonight, Oklahoma, Houston uh, is here, um, who else, California, Canada. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Connecticut, awesome. Who else is in here tonight? I want to make sure we can greet as many Indiana, of you as Illinois, South Carolina. Wow. Florida. Awesome. Awesome. Netherlands. Go ahead, Netherlands. We see you. Awesome. All right. I see Texas. North Dakota. All five of those people are online tonight. <laughs> we see you awesome. north dakota bless you we love you yeah we interviewed uh becky fisher we did an e-course one time on uh, raising supernatural kids becky fisher was from north dakota just an incredible uh, she did jesus camp i don't know if you remember oh, that, Lou, I remember Lou seeing Engel. that yes 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 man what a what a pioneer fiery she was. lady right we yeah, way ahead of her time just yeah. a, a tr tremendous she she wasn't she wasn't messing around <laughs> but uh yeah all right well everybody welcome um billy and i are gonna have hawaii. A, a comp hawaii's on there yeah sorry we're go gonna ahead. have a no it's okay we're gonna have a, a conversation tonight about uh what it means to be a burning one what it means uh to live with a vulnerable heart before the lord you know, Billy, on on my journey personally, uh, you know, you kind of intercepted me uh, not too long ago where I have been on this journey of walking out a public process as a public figure. And I think, you know, being asked to love, uh, being asked to forgive, you go through these cycles where, you know, you go all in, you invest and then something happens and the human tendency is to harden your heart and go inward. And then you sort of begin this cycle uh, in ministry. I, I liken it sometimes to like a paramedic or a police officer. They're around trauma. They're around injury so much that over time they become desensitized mm -hmm. to the hurt and pain around them. And mm -hmm. I found oftentimes in Christianity, I don't know if there's any pastors or <clears throat> leaders on the call tonight or just people invested in ministry could be, you know, a cell group leader. Can you talk to us, Billy, a little bit about your experience, you know, this this tendency that we have to harden our hearts or go inward and what you really feel like the Lord is inviting the body of Christ into in this hour, just in terms of transparency and vulnerability. Yeah. I mean, there's so much there. And, and I think the world we live in is so uh, attuned to attacking when, when people are struggling, there's a, there's a, it's like blood in the water almost, and people tend to pile on. And 
all the admonitions in scripture that we're supposed to um, restore those that are struggling, that are in sin, that are broken, uh, looking to ourselves with meekness and humility. It's the exact opposite of the culture, right? You know, and so I think what we what we have to get back to is, you know, for me, the ground zero of Christian love, Christian authenticity, is John 13 to 17. It's Jesus unpacking the deepest thoughts and desires and emotions in his heart. And he's about to be arrested within an hour. You know, I mean, he's it's an, it's an hour before he's arrested and then beaten and bludgeoned. And so he's given the disciples in those passages amazing insight into what's coming. But for me, it's so powerful that because he's talking to them about how they should interrelate with one another, interrelate with God, and he's pointing to himself as the example. And so he basically says, my heart has been open with the Father. The Father has been open with me. I've been open with you. And this is how you guys are going to act and operate when I leave. And he literally commands them to love one another, which you'd think, hey, didn't you already give the first and second commandment? Like what last night and you're telling them to love each other? I don't quite. And the reason why is because he was the glue to their relationships. And he says, if you'll if you want to abide in my love, you'll you're gonna keep my commands. And my command is to love one another. And he puts them in this this cycle of love. And here's the point though. We don't really love unless we're being open and honest and mm -hmm. real. We don't love unless we're being vulnerable. Love has to allow itself to give love, yes, but to also receive it. And love has to be accepted with vulnerability and authenticity. And so it just brings us to this place of really getting down to the nitty gritty of, are you in public who you are in private? Has Christianity become um, some sort of a play and you're just an actor in the play and you're putting up some sort of a front in front of everyone else? Or is this thing guttural, real, and, and, and is it honest? And I mean, like if my kids in my house are seeing a different me than people that see me on a platform and, you know, or on some media thing, then my Christianity, it's, it's really just duplicitous and, and false. And uh, we have an entire generation of young people who have been raised that way. They've seen something on the stage, something in the public that hasn't been reproduced in their homes. And they're, they're saying, look, we, we don't want some fake deal. So we're just, we're out. And I think Jesus is right now bringing us to that, that ground zero of love where we're open, we're honest, we're real, and we invite people into our heart. We give our heart freely and, and we live like that. And, um, you know, the reason why we don't is because we're afraid. We're afraid that people won't like the real us and that if we present something that's less than uh, less than a uh, perfect that's authentic, that's less than perfect, that they won't appreciate that, they won't like that, they won't follow that. And um, it's the exact opposite of the Bible. The Lord saw to it that David, that Paul, that Moses, that Adam, that, I mean, you just named Peter, that all of them, their stuff was on display. They were real people with real issues going hard into God and walking out the thing that you were saying, like you've been walking out this year, a very difficult, but you know, in public, but powerful example of what it means just to be hu humble and open and honest. And um, for me, man, that's that's what drew me to you, you know, Jeremiah. When I when I my first connection with you was, bro. I just love you. I don't even know you. I just love you, dude. The fact that you would be so honest and real. And that's what I think the world is, is begging for right now. It's a Christianity that's real. It's open. It's honest. It's love at the deepest level. And it's not some fake performance. 
Incredible. So, Billy, just to kind of, you know, summarize and recap a little bit, I just want to make sure that our, our listeners are, you know, are hearing what you're saying. You know, you're, you're talking about John 14 to 17, the, those those several. If, if you're on the call tonight, Billy, you kind of you believe or you kind of tee it up like those couple of ch- chapters are are Jesus's battle plan it's his strategy for the last days mm-hmm. can you just I want to I want to just touch on that for a couple of minutes just get give us your thoughts what exactly if people are on the call tonight they're looking for something maybe concrete in the word that they can grab hold of mm-hmm. you know a couple of t- talk to us about John 14 to 17 just sure. just a little bit more so uh, let's just Let's springboard from Matthew 24 to John 13, 70. So Matthew 24, Jesus teaches that on Tuesday night. That's his last week. He's going to teach Matthew 24, which is the Olivet Discourse. It's his biggest teaching on the end times. He teaches that on Tuesday night. One of the key things he says in Matthew 24 is that the love of many will grow cold. And he says there will be, there will be great betrayal. And that's among believers. Okay. It's one of the, it's going to be one of the key difficulties and challenges that the church will face at the end of the age. All right. Is this, this spirit of betrayal and and this loveless, this cold lovelessness. So Thursday night, that's, that's when he's doing John 13 to 17. He's now giving them the antidote to the negative components that he said are going to be the challenges for believers at the end of the age. And this point of betrayal, deception, lovelessness, the love of many growing cold, he's now answering that. And so what he does is he, he walks through chapter by chapter and basically explains how we're going to operate with the Holy spirit on the inside, how we're going to operate given to the love of God, how we're going to be given to one another in love. And he's doing that within hours of him about be, to be betrayed. So mm-hmm. it, he, it's a pictorial that is getting ready to get walked out right in front of them. And so the content of those passages, it applies to his teaching on Tuesday night, which is the end of the age, but it applies to this is what you're going to be doing this week. Because I'm about to be betrayed. I need you to love one another. I need you to be, you know, connected to this truth that the Holy Spirit is coming. He's going to reveal to you things in front. I've been telling you everything up till now, but the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to show you what's coming. And from now on, you're not going to ask me. You're going to ask the Father in my name. And you're, it's really on my behalf. And he's, he's, he's literally shifting everything that night so that the believers will now walk with open, vulnerable hearts with one another and with God. And if I would, if I could just say John 14 to 17 in a nutshell, what is it? It's how believers are to walk with an open and vulnerable heart in the love of God by the power of the Holy Spirit in the face of crisis and betrayal and in the most unthinkable of circumstances, because they're about to watch Jesus get arrested and tortured to death. And he's calling them into love as a result. I wish you <laughs> I wish you could I wish you could repeat the last 30 <laughs> seconds of that, man. I remember, you know, you were in our studio and then you came to ASM and Billy, I mean, just Man, you you started teaching this stuff, and I I remember sitting in the back. I think you 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 pointed me out. I had to start pacing, you know, back and <laughs> back and forth, you know, because pe- you know people right now, man, be, because we're seeing like you're saying the manifestation of Matthew twenty four. Jesus Himself prophesied it. You know, we we don't need a charismatic hero prophet mm-hmm. to get up there. He's already spoken it. And, you know, Tuesday night, then you're helping us to connect, you know, John 13 to 17 here. And uh, man, just just very clear, um, you know, anyone watching this call, which is which is my heart behind this, 
right? We're training and equipping. And anyone on this call can read Matthew 24 tonight. And then they can go uh, from the 13th through the 17th in John and just begin to dialogue with the Holy Spirit um, mm -hmm. about, again, what he's doing globally, but also, you know, how 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 we can do this personally. Right. I mean, is that kind of kind of what what you're thinking For as sure. it plays out? Yeah, I think so often we can get caught up in a big narrative. And I think we should. I, I'm a visionary. I, I think about the global movement of the kingdom, the global prayer movement, the global missions movement. I, I constantly think about these things. But so often we can get lost in the big narrative and then we don't apply the truths to our day in and day out. And so the, the point of John 13 to 17 is this is how we walk these things out day in and day out. And really it's about... Uh, living this way with your top 10 or 15 folk. And if, if every believer would love the way that Jesus commanded the disciples to love, it would be a testament. It's what he said in John 13. He says the world would understand that I was sent from the father, but I, I'll show you, you know, talking about a tactile way to, that this has walked out. It's really interesting. When you look at John and, and you know, go back and, and, and look at this sometime, Jeremiah, because this is, this is so interesting to me. When you read the book of John, John 20. All right, so this is how John 20 ends. Truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the, is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. That sounds like amen. That sounds like the end of the book. That's, that's John chapter 20. Those are the last verses. It sounds like he finishes. All right, here's what happens. John 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias or in Capernaum, Sea of Galilee. And John is going to walk through Peter's restoration. And when you, when you read chapter 21 in Peter's restoration, it is stunning because it really feels like John finishes the book in chapter 20. And he goes, no, no, I, I really need to add that thing about how Peter was restored and how Peter left to go fishing. So Peter goes fishing and he's out all night fishing. That's not recreational fishing. That's he's not out there just trying to catch a bass. <laughs> like This is all night fishing to try to make a living. That's what he's doing. And when you read it, the guys that went with him, some of them weren't even fishermen. Mm -hmm. Nathaniel, I mean, you know, these guys, uh, um, Thomas, they're not fishermen. Thomas, mm -hmm. Nathaniel, of course, James and John go too, but they go and they, they, they're with Peter. And what is going on there? They are following Jesus' command to love one another. And they're like, Peter, bro, you're out here. You're going after this thing. It's not what Jesus called us to be and do, but we get it. You're hurting. There, we'll, we'll come with you. We'll be with you all night if we have to. And then they fish. There's no fish. They look up. There's a guy on the, on the shore, catch the net on the other side. And here's what happens. Jesus restores Peter with the same miracle that he called Peter because he calls him with a great catch of fish. And then he recalls him with another great catch of fish. But the bros, the disciples are there with Peter in his shambles. Peter is, he is torn down. He is, ex, he's exploded on the inside because he's done the unthinkable. He cannot imagine that he's denied Jesus Christ, the son of God. He's denied him. And now he's seen him raised from the dead, but he denied him and cursed to, to act as if he was not a part of the number. He disqualified himself, and then Jesus comes and reinstates him. But I'm convinced John put that whole chapter in there to show us the way we're supposed to love through trial, through betrayal, through breakdown, through denial, through sin, and stay with those that God has called us to, to, to live with, those that are in our, in our 5 and 10 and 20. All those disciples had was one another.
They didn't have anything else. They had three and a half years with God in the flesh, and they didn't have anything else. And so they stuck with Peter at Jesus' command. Profound, man. That's... It's what we're you know, supposed to do. It's how we're supposed to live. And it's it's not this big, giant, you know, I mean, yes, we've got massive ministry movements. I'm all for massive ministry movements. Don't, don't hear me like I'm, I'm against that stuff. I want mass evangelism, massive ministry, mass teaching, all that stuff. I want it to explode. I want revival. But this thing has got to play out with open hearts loving at ground zero when we're in ashes and shambles or what we do on platforms doesn't even matter. Yeah, and there there seems to be such a a disillusionment with um, you know the 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 rock star celebrity Christianity movement, and like you said, of course there are individuals out there that the Lord's blessed and given favor that have the right heart and all of that. But it just seems, you know, I, I mean, I can even attest to this. You know, it, it's like if if you if you stand everybody up and, and you personally prophesy to them or if you talk about demons and spiritual warfare or, you know, you go after divine healing, it's like people, they gobble this stuff up. But then when you shift to love, pure and simple hearted devote, it's like people just check out in a in a moment. And, um, you know, it seems like the shaking and what the Lord is after in this hour is is le- it's it's almost like He's going after our appetite. Uh, yeah. He's going after the the things that really matter most. And for people that are maybe hooked on something else, uh, the, these these kind of core foundational messages, um, man, they're they're so needed. You know, for those of you who don't know, and I'll just give a. A little bit of a testimony of this, you know, Billy, you were with us at one of our altar conferences in September mm. and, you know, you came and just shared out of a vulnerable, transparent heart and just confessing sin, what, you know, your own your own journey to love. There there wasn't anything flashy there, there wasn't any, you know, demonstrative thing. And when you opened up the altars, man, it was like, I mean, a, 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 a knife went into everybody's heart and they're just, they, I mean, I remember watching one woman, I mean, she just like fell down into the altar and the testimonies from that gathering again of just, you know, learning how to forgive, learning how to love one another, reconciliation in families and relationships. I just feel like, you know, what the spirit could be saying to a lot of people is like, how long are you going to keep going for the cotton candy and the sugar and the charismatic circus, if you will? And when are you just going to come back to your first love? When are you going to come back to the words of Jesus and the examples um, of even Peter and these guys. That's when you were talking about this, I feel like the Lord said to me, when, when we forget our song, God has a way of singing our song back mm. to us. Yes. And, and when you, when you said in the same way that God called Peter, he uses it again at the end of his life. Sometimes we, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, we had an evil intention, but there's a lot of Christianity. We've just gotten off track. And I believe that the pandemic, if we can look at it from a redemptive perspective, I mean, the Lord has really kicked out a lot of props, a lot of codependencies. And it just, it feels like there's this massive invitation to simplicity, burning hearts, loving one another, what are, what are some of your thoughts? Yeah, I. so the word that you're talking about from the conference was, you know, from Revelation 3. And um, the Lord has just all year long just, he's just continued to bring me back to Revelation 3. And it's, you know, I think it's one of those passages when Jesus is talking to the church at Laodicea that, you know, a lot of Christians, we just want to sidestep that one. Like, hey, I'm not lukewarm, I'm, I'm on fire, da 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 But... I don't think, I, mean, I just think that we have got to allow that, those words of Jesus Christ to go deeply into our hearts right now. I, I don't think that those words are for the people that 
you know, we kind of put the, to the, to the guys, guys that are really struggling out there just barely hanging on. And, and, and that's not who he's addressing. He's addressing the ones that don't know that they don't know. He's not addressing the ones that are obviously and evidently in sin. He's addressing the ones that their hearts have grown cold. And, but the, the thing that just keeps coming back to me is he's like, I'm telling you this because I love you. I'm not. I'm not telling you this. I'm not telling you you're lukewarm because I hate you. I'm telling you, tell you this because I love you. But when you get down to the, behold, I stand at the door and knock, that verse twenty, that is Jesus knocking on the door of our heart and asking us, please let me in. I want more fellowship with you. I want to be with you. I want to. I want to dine with you and enjoy fellowship and love together. And the I you know the new living, it says this, let us eat together as friends, mm. and I'm, I'm beginning to get on this track, where I believe the Lord is calling the bride yes to maturity and love, but this is the thing that I'm I'm really starting to just, and percolating on right now, and it's, that mature sonship is friendship and mature i'll use the word brideship that's my word but mature brideship is friendship you think about an old couple that have they've been together their whole lives and they love one another as best friends and i'm convinced that the church the mature bride the church at the end of the age it's going to be jesus friend and if we're going to be Jesus' friend right now, we're going to have to love like he loves, man. We're going to have to open our hearts like he did. And we're going to have to open our heart to him firstly and then open our hearts to one another. And uh, and I'm just I'm staring at this idea about really entering into friendship with the Son of God. I, I believe this. So I shared this at Corey's conference, but I believe this. I believe the earth is about to enter into is maybe entering entering into a global garden of Gethsemane. And we are about to in, enter in an intercession with the son of God, a travail. You remember he entered into a travail that brought souls through the cross. He bore the sin of the earth. But I believe we're entering into a season of intercession and partnership with the son of God that is not going to just, it's not birthing the cross. It's birthing the kingdom. It's birthing the mm -hmm. finality. It's birthing the, the, the end of the age drama. It's birthing Jesus Christ in his fullness to the earth. And so we're entering in to a global <laughs> garden, but here's the point who got invited into the garden with Jesus, his Peter, friends. James, and John, his closest ones, his friends, and the, when you read that passage in the different um, gospel accounts, you'll find this. It says they faint, they fell asleep because of sorrow. I believe it's in, it's in Luke's account. It says they fell asleep because of sorrow. Bro, they came under the travail of soul. The Son of God was bearing, and they didn't have the Holy Spirit on the inside. They weren't born again yet, and they crumbled. They literally cried themselves to sleep. But I'm telling you, there's a global bride that's entering into maturity and love, entering into friendship with the Son of God, whose heart is open to him. Jesus is coming in and fellowshipping with her. But he's saying, now come with me, my beloved, come into the garden with me again. And this time he's going to be birthed into the earth. The kingdom is going to be birthed. The 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 nations are going to shake. He is going to judge the wicked. Massive revival, massive harvest, massive judgments, and the enthronement, the full enthronement of the Son of God on the earth. But he's inviting the church into this global garden as friends. And this is why we got to get over ourselves, get over our ministries, get over our whatevers, and hold the hand, hold the hand of our Jesus, hold the hand of our of our savior, our dear friend, because he's about to be birthed into the earth in, in his second coming. Mm. I believe that's the moment we're in friendship. And we're going to learn what it means to be friends with Jesus. Mm. I'm just imagining this headline 2022, the global garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> it, it, this is, 
<laughs> hey, it might not get a lot of likes and shares and, you know, publicity, but man, I, you know, it's like all of us on here, man, you, you have that inner witness of the Holy Spirit, man. And I'm like, my, my spiritual baby is jumping right now. I, 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 you know, the, just this, some of this language, uh, that that's a lot of G's global garden, of Gethsemane, <laughs> the, the three G's man. But wow, I, I love it. I, I, I deeply resonate with that. I, I, you know, and Billy, I think, I think part of it, man, you know, you know, me, I mean, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a holiness, you know, kind of consecration yeah. plumb line standard bearer kind of guy and I think sometimes people misunderstand, you know, the, the, the call to consecration. It's, it's born out of affection and encounter and yes. friendship. And yes. I, I, I can't imagine, you know, going all out for the Lord. I, I often told people the Lord said to me one day, you know, uh, obedience apart from intimacy, it creates religious slaves and I think a lot of times, you know, all when, when people hear Gethsemane or suffering or the way of the cross, they're like, now, you know, I'll pass, you know, is there another door I could go through? But, you know, it's in that encounter. It's in that partnership. Um, it's it's in that divine romance that, you know, like you said, as an older couple, man, there's a, there's an exchange, you know, there's an encounter that gives way to you know, not, not, I have to, but I get mm. to, and that's just a real burden that I have uh, for the global body of Christ is that we out of this, again, the first love, the encounter, you know, understanding that we willingly, and, and, you know, Jesus said, he, you know, in Psalm 40, he took the scroll and he said, I delight to do thy will, mm. O mm. God. Mm. And, you know, the will of God led to the cross, right? I delight to do thy mm -hmm. will, O God. And I just even pray tonight as, as we're on the call that, that a, a shift from duty to delight mm -hmm. and maybe a, a shift from, you know, maybe some kind of, uh, you know, slavery mentality that, that's not producing fruit. Just pray for fresh anointing oil and encounter and intimacy that, that would lead people um, to the way of, of the kingdom. Yeah, man, there's so much there. I mean, Jesus said, I don't call you slaves anymore. I call you friends. Paul expanded on that. And he says, you don't have a spirit of, of uh, slavery. You have a spirit of sonship. sonship. And Jesus, so Paul takes Jesus teaching and makes the sonship and the friendship the same idea. We're delivered out of slavery into friendship and sonship which is just a, I mean, just a powerful, powerful thought. Think about, you know, when a child, like my, my boys are all adults now. I have 18, 20, and 22 year old sons. And when they were five, you know, they were, they were just kids. But my, my 22 year old, man, he's full of wisdom. He, he's full of the knowledge of God. He's, 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 you know, well read in some areas and he and I much more operate on a friendship level. Mature sonship is friendship. Mature brideship is friendship. But this is the other point about you, you're saying about how we, um, we kind of draw back. When we hear these words about consecration or the Garden of Gethsemane or bearing sufferings with Christ. I mean, Paul in Romans 8, he says, you are sons if you suffer with him. But Song of Solomon 5, after she suffers, so Song of Solomon 5 is a picture of the garden. It's a picture mm -hmm. of the Garden of yes. Gethsemane. But the last thing she says after she explodes in verse 10 with all this revelation of the beauty of God, the last thing she says is, this is my beloved and this is my friend. Mm. And in chapter 6, it is an onslaught of heavenly power and glory. And you start seeing images of revival and images of the kingdom coming in 6 and 7 and 8. And I'm just saying that the, the church, the global bride, is going to get so given in love that she's going to get into a maturity that is friendship. It's friendship. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing that the Lord's been hammering me with because he's been saying if you can't be a friend— to each other, how, how yeah. do you imagine you're going to step into friendship with me? 
And he started dealing with me about if you give your friendship away, you need to realize that's not some tr trivial or frivolous thing. Friendship is the most valuable thing you can give. Hmm. And when Jesus made that shift with the disciples in John 15, no longer do I call you servants, I call you friends. It was bringing us into a whole nother revelation of intimacy with the Son of God. Can you imagine God? Because that thing is talking about mutuality. You know, he th that's not talking about there's a lead friend and then the associate friend, you know. Friendship is mutual. And yeah. uh, that's that J.I. Packer quote you gave me, man, about <clears throat> how God created us sentient beings with emotion and the ability to choose and, and so multifaceted in our makeup so that we could interrelate with him in mutuality. This is where he's taking everything, I'm convinced. And I think I'm just scratching the surface on it. I think there's a lot more to, to grow out of that. Yeah, this <clears throat> this call feels uh, mega pregnant. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like we're we're like on on the on the precipice <laughs> of 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 something major. And again, the spirit the spirit will bear witness. I mean, you know, the way that it was taught to me is just like you know, it's the cross, it's, it's the vertical. And then, you know, so we're talking about friendship with God and then it's, it's horizontal. So it's like, you can't say, I love you, God, and then not love one another. And I'm just, you know, something that even struck me, maybe it could be helpful for those on tonight. You know, I, I watched an interview with Chris Valentin and Bill Johnson one day, and people were asking them, how, how have you been friends for like 40 years? You know, just, just a long standing relationship. And, it's, you know, Chris's words just rocked me to the core. He said when they were in their 20s, they made a pact with one another that they would stick together through the storms of life through the pain, through the suffering, and would not allow trial and testing to deter their friendship. And, you know, it's sort of what we're saying. I mean, there's the Lord is calling, you know, the, the bride into a global garden of Gethsemane. Mm. But I deeply sense um, there are some friendships that we all yes. have that are in the global garden of Gethsemane and we're not going to see to eye, eye to eye on everything. And there's going to be a fence, but you know, I noticed early on, it's like, if you don't have relational equity with people, when things go South, you will walk away every single time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think the spirit is even calling out to some of us who maybe there's some strained friendships. Maybe you, the Lord's been talking to me. I mean, how, how many friends did we lose during this pandemic? Because all we've been doing is fighting about masks and vaccines and political parties. I mean, the vitriol out there, I, I've just even been praying like, Lord, restore some of these broken relationships that have happened, friendships as a result of, of the pandemic. Yeah, I, I think I think there is a revelation of friendship in love that we are, the church is about to uh, receive that is going to take us to a different place in oneness. And that's really where Jesus ends that John 13 through 17, because he really does deal with this friendship issue all the way through openness, vulnerability, authenticity. This is all about friendship and, and, and love until John 17, where he says, he goes, you guys, uh, I'm bearing my glory. I'm bearing my soul with you that you'd be one. And that we, there is a unity, there is a oneness, a bondedness that we are going to experience um, in, in the church, among leaders, among movements. I think it's going to be dramatic how yoked and knit together we are. But I'm telling you, we're not going to get there just because we have a unity meeting. Unity meetings are awesome. I've done zillions of unity meetings. Part of our ministry was birthing unity in our city, and we've done a lot of work on that. But I'm convinced the John 17 oneness doesn't come from a unity meeting. It comes from having an open, vulnerable heart and disclosing yourself with one another wins and losses until you just you're just bare. And mm -hmm. either you love me or you don't love me. But I'm, I'm here saying this is who I am. And if we'll approach one another like that, Holy Spirit means that with glory and power. And you and I have seen that as 
sharing openly how the Lord will meet those moments with power. And uh, I think we're just scratching the surface on where, where we're going to go in this covenantal bond of love and friendship that the Lord's going to produce in the church. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> what an example Jesus has given us. I mean, he invites his friends, and you know, into the garden. They're, they're falling asleep. He gets crucified. They're fleeing. He he comes back. You know, you mentioned John 20, 21. I mean, oh, my gosh. You know, he disarms all of, you know, I even notice sometimes on social media, a lot of posts that go viral. It's like it strengthens bitterness. They 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 give reasons like, you know, yeah, they did me wrong. And this is why I need to. And, you know, the way of the ways of Jesus and his example, it, it's startling. It's it's worth reading again and again and again and again until he comes again, asking the Holy Spirit to do such a work in our hearts. Yeah, I totally agree. Awesome. Well, Billy, thanks for for joining us. So I, I want to uh, thank all of you who are who have been chatting who signed up, who have been joining us, uh, you know, a couple, like Billy, I think it was what, maybe a, around a month ago or so, maybe it was a little, little more than that. I'm not sure if it was a little less, but Billy came to our headquarters in North Carolina and uh, we began to film um, what we call an e-course in our studio and it's 10 modules of teaching and training. We, we wanted to get on the call tonight and just share our hearts, some things that are stirring. But Billy and I got together and had open dialogue and conversations. Uh, we taught separately. Uh, our media team here at the Altar Global works around the clock, uh, 40 to 50 hours of labor and hard work that they put into these e-courses. And so tonight, uh, before we go, we want to make the e-course available to anyone that's on the call tonight. And just something that we want to do, we realize that some people, they, they jump in with us on these e-courses. Other people, you know, they don't even know what it is. And so one of the things that our team decided to do and you'll see this offer um, pop up in the chat section. So just for $1, okay, if you've got $1 tonight and you want to join us, you will get a preview of the e-course. You will basically get access to several of the modules that Billy and I did just for a dollar. And then if you want to go on from there and finish it up and get the full download of all the teachings and training that we did, you'll have an opportunity to mm -hmm. do that. So whether you've been on the call tonight and you were blessed by the conversation and you want to leave it there or the Holy Spirit's just leading you, wants, wants to take you and really taking this course to dive deeper, um, I I would uh, feel in my heart that it's okay to say it's definitely worth your time. It's worth your investment. I know for me, you know, I, I, I don't know how many dollars I spent today on coffee or whatnot, but I think a dollar of anyone's time would be a, a great investment. And Billy, thanks for, for, for joining us, uh, you know, at the studio. We had a, had a, a great time. So, um, while we're on the call, we're going to go into to prayer, but if our team, um, our media team that's with us just wants to drop the offer, the preview access into the comment section, people can start checking us out. But Billy, what was your time like with us in the studio? Did you enjoy oh, it? Yeah, we had an awesome time together. I, you know, that, that, uh, first night, well, we spent, we spent what, six or eight sessions in the studio together. I don't remember, but the first night we did two hours. And, uh, is that, and that, is that part of the, is that part yes. of the class? Yeah. Yes. And that two hour session, um, you know, I thought, well, you gave me two hours. Just, you said, just take your time. I go, well, I'll do 30, 45 minutes. I'll be, I'll be easy. But as, as I began to teach the, there was such an ease and a grace on this messaging from John 13 to 17. It, I really felt like, man, the Lord is emphasizing this in a in a rich way. But I even remember that night we got to dinner with a few of your staff and we're just sharing and they're just talking. I mean, they're just sharing like what God spoke to their heart that night. And they're in tears 
in the Longhorn, you know, and we're just fellowshipping together and the Lord is meeting us at the table till I remember the waitress, she's like whispering, walking up, whispering and trying to get out of there. <laughs> but I mean, there was a presence that the Lord was meeting us with that I thought was, um, it was notable, notable. I yeah. don't hype anything. It was, it was powerful. And yeah, and maybe I, 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 so, I just so enjoyed it. Maybe I should release a warning, like warning, don't, don't get this e-course unless you're ready to get messed up. <laughs> but yeah, I, I could, I could testify that this material, this subject diving in deeper is definitely going to unearth and, and force conversations. And I remember I was like, you know, I wanted to text you after you left because it's like counseling appointments erupted people wanting to <laughs> get, I'm like, thanks, Billy. You know, you <laughs> just came in here and, you know, talked about vulnerability and forgiveness and love. And, you know, you, you carry such an anointing on this, um, you know, that again, I just feel like if anybody's watching, you, you want to grab this, just start out with a dollar, see how, how you like it. Um, you're, you're more than welcome to. So um, yeah, Billy, as we kind of close tonight, would you, would you mind praying, praying for those on the call uh, tonight, just being led by the Holy Spirit, and then then I'll I'll close in prayer as well. Yes, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for the way you love us. And Jesus, I am asking for every person on this call, every person that will connect to this course, that you would begin to tenderly <laughs> speak to their heart and draw them in to a deeper place of intimacy, a deeper place of love, that they would know you in a way they've never known you before. I pray, bring them to mature sonship. Bring them to mature brideship. Bring them into friendship. And Lord, we look at you and we see you, Jesus, standing at the door and knocking. You're knocking on our hearts. You're knocking at the door of the church and you're wanting to come in and fellowship. And so, Lord, let us be ones that say we open our heart and we let you in. We want you to come into every area. We want to live open and vulnerable to you, son of God, and teach us what it looks like to live open and vulnerable with one another, that we would truly live out the love that we preach and that we believe. So God, I'm asking, even right now, I, I ask you, release encounter on those watching this call. Release the presence of the Holy Spirit. I pray for the love of God that passes understanding to rest on hearts and minds, even right now. God, I pray you'd crack open even dry hearts, hard hearts, and you'd let them sense that there's so much more available in the depths of the knowledge of you, the depths of the love of God. Even right now, I pray, prick hearts to draw them in, to know the way you think and feel, that we would be a ready bride, that we'd be a ready bride joining you in this global garden of intercession to see the kingdom birthed into the earth. So come, Holy Spirit. Come, draw us into love. Draw us into the heart of the Son of God right now, I ask in Jesus' name. And Jesus, we just thank you for your words, your kingdom come, your will be done. Well, we thank you that you said not my will, but yours be done. And Lord, we just surrender, Lord, just relationships and friendships sure. and just think things that you're touching in our lives. Lord, we're asking, Lord, if, if the cup could pass, Lord, if, 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 if you could just ask us about something else, Lord, I just I feel like there's cups. There, there's, there's, there's areas of our lives, there's friendships, and we're saying, Lord, anything but that. Lord, we just mm -hmm. pray for, for a grace to surrender our Lord, will before Lord, you. Lord. And uh, I just even feel like the Spirit is saying, I'm going to help many of you. I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm going to help many of you who are stuck. And uh, I feel like the Lord's just really, I see anointing oil coming just helping to to areas, friendships, relationships, even even devotional lives that feel stuck. I just see anointing coming, helping to almost unstuck you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a word, but I just I, I see oil coming uh, to you in this season. And Lord, I just bless everyone, Lord, during this holiday season. Lord, I know Christmas and New Year's is just can be really hard and draining on marriages and families and relationships. And God, we're just believing you. 
Lord, just that even this call has a forerunner spirit on it, Lord, that your spirit is releasing a word and then a heart impartation to people to help them to navigate this coming new year. Lord, we just say yes to the invitation for the Global Garden of Gethsemane in 2022. Lord, we just were grateful, we're desiring, Lord, for, for your will to be done this next year. In yes, Jesus' God. name, amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Billy, I know I don't know if anybody or a lot of people know, but you you're you're in the midst of a sabbatical. Yeah. Um, this is you know you you did this for me and our friendship. You, it's I, the I, only I, one. You're the only one, bro. It's crazy. I was like Billy. He's he's totally totally getting with the Lord and. Man, I, I'm just I'm humbled that you'd get on the call tonight as like your one one thing during your sabbatical. Um, just for those who are still on tonight, Billy, how how can we be praying for you? Um, you're, you're taking nine months off to get with the Lord. How can we be praying for you over these next nine months? Yeah, thanks. I mean, we were talking before we went on and I was just explaining like sabbatical sounds like the easiest thing ever oh you just take a rest you just read your bible this is <laughs> jesus and uh i would just say just honestly like this first month of sabbatical has been very challenging and um i've i've been in ministry 27 years never taken an extended time of rest it's probably not very healthy and um the truth of the matter is it's taken me this last four or five weeks to just feel like my soul was settling down and mm -hmm. uh, I've had intense warfare on my mind mm -hmm. and um, and then just even my soul feeling unsettled. And so I feel like I got a little bit of a breakthrough this past weekend. Honestly, I got a prayer team that prays for me and I've been telling them guys, Hey, go to war for me right now. But I would say this, that whatever the Lord has for me in this nine months, if, if there would be, if there was 15 people that would just, think about me once a week and just say, give Lord, do whatever it is you want to do in Billy Humphrey's life. Do it. Um, over these next eight, I got eight months left, man. That would be such a gift to me. Um, that if, if there would be 15 people that pray for me once a week for the next, you know, eight months, that would be amazing. But yeah, it's really, I just want whatever it is that God has in mind. But I think firstly and foremostly, it's learning to live from this place of rest you know, he gave me Exodus 14, 14, be still, be still, and the Lord will fight for you. Yeah. And I feel like that's the, that's the place I'm in. And I, I kind of feel like there's a word being birthed out of that stillness, that the Lord is the one that brings the victory in, in that place of rest and stillness. So that's, man, I, that would be such a gift to have just intercessors pray along those lines for me. So. All right, y'all. He's made a request. I'm, I, I think I see three so far. If there's, if there, I know, you know, if there's 15 people on 15 call, doesn't have to be the number. I just, whatever. I don't even know how many people that, are on the call, but I just, anyway, that would be it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I love that nine months, you know, it's like that first month of a woman, she's vomiting. She's bro. more, you know, it's just like, you're in that, you're in that detox That's as you're talking. Me, bro. I'm like, yeah. That first semester is usually the rough one. <laughs> so interesting for sure. Yeah. Well, Billy, I, I'll commit to pray for you. I know some people you, here uh, tonight. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for doing this Burning Ones e-course with us, this free webinar tonight. It really felt like the spirit was with us and is pleased. Amen. So thanks you. Thanks again. Love you, bud. Talk to Love you, you soon. Love you too. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Right, bye. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that um, you enjoyed this call with Billy. Um, if, if anyone is still on, I, I, I really have a burden um, for Billy tonight. Um, if, if, you, if you're feeling stirred to pray, can you just comment in that section? I really, you know, Billy is a forerunner. He's a father. He's clearly carrying the word of the Lord and we, we need him healthy. We need him strong in the days ahead. And so if, if some of us maybe just might, again, just once a week, remember him in our prayers. Um, I think that that would be awesome. And then also, even if you're wondering, you know, as, as you, if, as you sign up for this e-course, um, it's a way to bless Billy. 
um, you know, as he's, you know, operating in faith and just taking a sabbatical, um, we'd love to send him an offering. And so um, if you want to join us uh, on this, we'd love to have you. And again, whether it was tonight or the Lord is uh, leading you forward with us in this training, just so grateful for you. Uh, stay updated with us. Uh, we're going to be interviewing, uh, doing a lot of media in 2022, have some great guests um, that are going to be on um, on the, the webinars uh, with us in 2022. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your investment um, and early. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. If you want to stay updated with us online, you can go to the Alter Global Facebook page or the Alter Gro Global Instagram account. God bless you guys and hope that you have a great night. We'll talk soon. Hey, I'm with my great friend, Billy Humphrey. So excited to announce the launch of a new e-course. In this e-course, we're gonna have candid conversations, practical teaching on what it looks like to be transparent, yep. vulnerable, really learning how to love one another in a day and age where the love of most is growing cold. Totally. John 13 to 17, Jesus unpacks some of the deepest drippings of his own heart for us. He models for us how to live completely transparent and vulnerable in intimacy with God and with one another. And it's really the prescription for the church at the end of the age to live alive and love, burning, and become that pure and spotless bride. It's just one of these things where we pour our hearts out and yeah, He touches we, us. We've done a lot of media projects. This one's gonna challenge. I'd encourage get a Kleenex box. <laughs> when you dive in with us, this is gonna be up and personal and the Holy Spirit's just gonna bless you. We encourage you, enroll now. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that the message that you just received challenge you and encourage you. I do want to go into a time of prayer, but before I do that, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a one-time gift into our ministry. Uh, there's going to be a number pop up on your screen, a link in the comment section, or if you're desiring to do something further, you know, so many people around the world desire to participate with the Alter Global Movement. We'd love to give you an opportunity to do that. That link is also going to be down in the comment sec section, being a part of our partner family. Let's pray now. God, thank you for those who have watched today, who you've refreshed and challenged and encouraged. Or we lift up the prayer requests. We lift up the gifts, the partners that are even joining right now. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the earth. You're readying your bride for your coming. You're bringing in a harvest of souls. And Lord, you're touching even the prayer requests being offered right now. We just ask all these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much.